guys what's up welcome back to another video i am sophie if you're new here welcome you are tuned in with the contented tribe so today guys i want to share with you a little story that i've kept in my heart for years i've told it to a few people maybe i can count it on my five fingers you know who have really you know um told this but today without fear at this time i am with great you know um bravery coming on air to share with you all you know my story about my first kiss it's not something that i've rejoiced about you know um i'm grateful to the most i that i can even come on here and share it because i think it's very embarrassing and trust me i never imagined that would have happened you know to me you know sometimes we hear people experience things in their life and we're like oh my goodness really but until it happens to you then you can say yeah it's possible so um let me just tread back to many years ago many years ago i was only 12. i think i just turned 12 because i didn't start high school yet you know so let me see yeah i didn't start high school yet so i just turned 12. i don't even know how to start i don't even know where to start but i'm gonna start somewhere okay so please understand if i'm all over the place please understand i'm almost 40 and my brain is getting old so please understand there are some things that you will not completely remember you know especially at such tender age but there's stuff that you will never forget and this i will never forget and many more to come guys if you guys just stay connected to this channel you're gonna hear my life because i'm gonna put it out here to show that yes things do happen to people all right so i was only 12 years old and every summer guys you know my friend and i we were church sisters you know growing up in jamaica there's a sunday church that i used to attend that's the church my grandmother brought me up in right it's called gospel all i will not give the town's name but it's called gospel all and so every summer i'll be so excited because my friend and i we were gonna spend time with our elder brother in the most high i won't say pastor because he wasn't a pastor from what i'm remembering but he was a great leader he was trust me he's the nicest until this day he's the sweetest he's a father he's a brother he's a friend he's a counselor trust me really beautiful man in the most high you know um it happened that you know every summer you know my friend and i will go to his house and that's where we we'll spend our summer because remember i'm from the country my friend is from the country when you're gonna spend time in town you're happy you're so happy so this now miss we so every summer that's where <coughs> whoa let me fix my my short leg <laughs> all right so every summer that's where we would spend holiday <sighs> He treat us well. I'm telling you. What did he make the place from again? Um, anyways, I don't remember. It's not on top of my head, but you know, I would have to go back in my memory box and really dig. But that's where we'll be every summer. He's a beautiful family man. It was him, his wife, and his son. Yeah. So one summer, I don't know what the agenda was, why this other pastor was invited to his house, you know. So this other pastor who used to preach, you know, whenever there's convention, you know, um, like convocation or those big church gathering, you know, he would be there because he's a radical preacher. I remember he's short, he's a short pastor. You know but his voice was heavy and he could preach 
he could preach radical preaching and as a little girl i love that i used to love you know when a pastor can preach but love i love when pastors can preach so anyways um he happened to be invited i i guess that specific summer day where my friend and i we were spending summer with our dear elder brother in the most I. my friend and i we shared you know room so one day while i was there sitting in the room i decided to just you know leave the room to go outside to you know maybe get some fresh air or whatever the case i don't remember and you know leaving the room there was a passage way so how the place set up guys there was the room where my friend and I, we were staying, it was the guest room. From the guest room, you have the passageway, you know, where the bathroom is located on the left coming out from our room where we stayed. And in front of that, facing the guest room was the room that, you know, his son, you know, was. That's where his room was. But in this room... <coughs> I was passing by when I heard Sister Sophie come here, you know, so um, the door was half mask or should I say it was half open, right? So me being obedient, you know, I went in the room. All right, guys, so I am here editing the video and I remember when he told me to come in the room, he asked me to push up the door a little bit behind me and I did because guess what? He's a pastor and when I went to the room I said yes pastor he said sit right here he was sitting there on you know my elder brother in the most high he was there sitting you know on you know his son's bed so he said to sit so I sit you know guys all I know that as soon as I sat down, the man tongue was in a throat. Twelve years old, the man tongue was in a throat. I was so shocked. I was so shocked. It happened so quick. Sometimes I wonder, like, oh, that happened. The man tongue was in a throat as a pastor almost pull up my tongue out of my head so i was so shocked i look at him and i i got out of the room so fast i got out of the room so fast guys i didn't even say nothing to nobody at all nobody i didn't share it with our elder brother in the most i did not share it him because i was so ashamed and then growing up i was brought up where everything you shut your mouth Everything happened to you in Jamaica, you shut your mouth. Because guess what? Nobody ain't gonna believe you. Many of us, if we can look in ourselves and speak the truth, tell me if me I tell a lie. Back home in Jamaica, the people them teach you to shut your mouth. Everything happened to you, they say don't say it to nobody. And that's how I was brought up. I couldn't believe, guys, I cried the whole day. I cried the whole day. I really can't remember if I did, you know, let my friend know at the time. We were baptized together. We were church, he says. But I know I did tell her. And for years, guys, I kept this in my heart. You know, I did tell my husband, of course. You know, um, I shared it with the aunt I have back home. I think when I was <laughs> a grown woman. While I was here, that's when I opened up to her. And I told her that was my first kiss from a pastor. Somebody who was supposed to represent the word of the Most High. Somebody, as the Bible said, that should be blameless. A pastor. I was only 12 years old. And to watch that same pastor go up on the pulpit to go and preach at this crusade. It made me wonder. I was only 12 anything could have happened to me 12 years old you know and these these are the things that these are the things that I take as a precaution when it comes to my children 
I don't trust nobody. Nobody at all. Because I've never thought, looking back, how can a pastor really do this? And the thing is, they are doing more than what we can ever think or even imagine. To the most I be all the praise and the glory. I never strip on my clothes and rape me. And then tell me, say, I'm a me. Because they love to tell lies. Whenever they do their dirty acts, it's always the victim is the problem. And guess what? Many Jamaican parents don't believe. They rather believe the, 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 the demon. You know, but guys, I, I, trust me, it's like I never thought that, you know, I would be here sharing this, you know, with all of you guys because it is embarrassing. It is disgusting. It is so disgusting. I cannot believe it. And I don't know if he's still alive, but I asked the most I to forgive him. I do not hold it against him. You know, but it just put me upon my guard when it comes to my children. I don't trust nobody. Because that's a pastor who's supposed to be, you know, leading the flock. I was only 12. I just got baptized. And that's the invitation I got. From you as a leader. I wonder if he's still I would love to face him. Maybe he would say I'm, I'm lying on him. Because they love to do that. These wicked people, whenever they harass you and put advance to you and all and do whatever what they know is not right. They say it's a lie and you don't remember. But I remember everything that happened to me. I remember I might forget some stuff, yes. You're not gonna really remember every nitty gritty. But you remember the, the main thing you remember. You'll never forget. Jamaica, another thing that says is the man that what I'm gonna ask my husband about this and then drop it, you know, so you guys can read it. But I never can remember this thing, but it's the one who walking something like that, anyways. But guys, that was my first kiss. It's disgusting, it was disgusting. It's like I can almost feel it now. It's disgusting. A man just taking tongue and push down my throat. In pushing, in literally pushing tongue down my throat. Twelve year old, these pedophiles standing on the pulpit. They're supposed to be representing the word, representing who call them. And this is what they're doing with teenagers in the churches. What are these people going to tell the most say? Hmm? It is so sad. So, so sad. But, guys, looking back, I don't know, like, I don't know how you do it, but I don't think I'm the only one. I could not be the only one because it looked like this man has something going to do regular. This is something going to do regular because there's no way possible I could be the only one. My telling, this is why the Bible says you're supposed to have a wife. The man that desired the office of a bishop, the one that desired the office of a deacon, should have one wife, this, that, whatever. Because if your, your arm wants kicking or something, you're supposed to take it out on your wife. Or take it out on your husband. I don't understand what is going on in the churches. And when the people in my leave, people say this and whatever. You understand me? They're not representing the most high. They're not representing the Most High. I pray that the Most High forgive him. I pray that the Most High forgive him. <sighs> but that's it, guys. That's that's it. That's it. I have so many story coming, so keep back, relax, and ready to listen. Because my days of holding back is over. Over. And I'm waking up parents. Be careful or you send your children out. It doesn't matter. Pastor, deacon, it no matter. Don't trust nobody. Don't trust nobody when it comes to your children. The most I put you in their life to be their protection. To be their protector. I don't believe in sleepovers. I'm that kind of mother. I don't believe in it. I mean I believe in it in something there. 
You understand me? I wouldn't say if I was protected because my grandmother really, she was there for me. She did her best for me. You know, she was my mother, my grandmother and my aunts and uncles and stuff. So, you know, I would not put no blame on them because my grandmother, she was there for me. She protected me. But as I've said, you know, we go every summer and nothing like that. I'm not sure if he's a pastor now, but I never even share that with him. Whenever I get a chance again, if it's the most I will, I will definitely share it with him. Ask him about You remember when that pastor came to your house that summer when we were there? I'm going to say to him. I don't, know if he not, I don't know if he would even believe. Jamaican people put pastors so high. You understand me like them out the most high? Yes, they're supposed to respect them, yes, but... You have to have your other eye open too. You have to have your other eye open. Yeah, guys, but this mother... I'm very protective of my children because of things that have been true. I'm gonna trust nothing. I'm gonna trust nothing, guys. Because I've been there. Because of the most I, I am here. Trust me. Trust me. If I didn't know the most I, I would have taken my life. If I didn't know the most I. But I'm grateful that at the age of 12, I knew him. I may not have known him by his name. I may not have known the true path, but I was in a relationship with him at such tender age. But anyways, um, that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please, parents, mothers, fathers, protect your children with a boy or girl. Protect them. Don't trust nothing. Don't trust nobody because... Things happen and sometimes we don't say nothing because we fear that you all will never believe because of the status or the title of the demon that is in, you know, is doing his work. Anyways, thank you so much for listening and with all that has been said and done, have a wonderful rest of your beautiful Friday. Bye guys. The day that I made